we talk about strategy analysis so the core area here is whenever there is a need of strategic or tactical importance whenever the stakeholders when we have to collaborate with our stakeholders and try to understand the need of strategic or tactical importance that time we get into strategy analysis so the closest example is when you are getting into a new project right that time you will start with strategy analysis so often people confuse this that why is it that bapm you know business analysis planning and monitoring is the first knowledge area babok is not really about sdlc remember that okay babok is all about what kind of activities does a business analyst perform in his day to day job we club them together we form a knowledge area that's what is important to understand so similarly when we are starting a new kind of active uh, a new kind of initiative that time we have to look at strategy analysis okay remember whenever you are doing strategy analysis what are we trying to do we are trying to find out how do we get from stage a to stage b your current state to your future state today you guys are not cbap certified that's your current state all right and you have to be a cbap certified in future a cbap or ccba or ecba whatever it is right or take any certification that's your future state you have to define that where do you want to be where do you want to go right so to do that you first need to understand where are you right now and what does it take to reach that future state what kind of strategy are you going to follow to reach that stage that will be done by task number 4 define change strategy and during this entire period from moving your you know tra your transition from stage a to stage b or your current state to your future state there will be risks that will be involved imagine today you don't have a house for example you and you are dreaming or maybe you are thinking that tomorrow or some day in future i have to buy a house so right now you will analyze your current state you will uh, look into your uh, finances you will look into all those risks that are associated with those finances plenty of things you look at your capabilities right you will look at uh, all the possible options that are available with you you will do plenty of things and then you will define future state that my house is going to look like this this is the kind of interior that i'm going to do right so during this period what kind of strategy do you need to build and what are the risks that are involved that you need to look at and that's what this knowledge area is all about strategy analysis and that's why we call it strategy analysis okay first thing is your current state uh, i'll not go into inputs and outputs this is verbatim but uh, just understand that whenever you are st uh, starting a new initiative you need to know what is required correct you need to know the needs that's mentioned over here and you would have done some kind of study some kind of analysis some kind of uh, elicitation with your stakeholders to try to understand what they want right that's why it becomes the input for you now based on this you are going to do some certain activities that we are going to talk about those certain activities are here listed here as elements and then once we are done with all those activities what you get is your current state description and business requirements makes sense right it will it will tell you what your current state is where are you are standing right now and it will along with that it will give you the business requirements there's a difference between needs and requirements needs are very vague my need is i uh, want a shelter for my family that's a very vague requirement that's a very it's it's actually a need right if you have to convert that to a requirement what will you say i need a penthouse i need a duplex i need a bungalow i need a 3 bhk or 2 bhk whatever it is right that's your requirement see requirement becomes more transformed it becomes more clear it becomes more formal that's the difference between needs and requirement so requirements is nothing but a usable representation of your needs that's what babox is right 
so that comes from your chapter number 1 and 2 those definitions are actually listed over there i'll not get into that i am hoping that you all understand what needs and requirements the difference between these two are the most important part where does a need generate it can be at the bottom of your organization the bottom most people uh, you know the developers or the testers or the infrastructure people they might be having certain kind of problem so they come up with a point that you know we need a solution for this and that goes higher up it comes as a project some day right it can be from top down your top leadership group defines uh that we need to get into this kind of project we need to build something new so that means it is coming from top right it can come from middle management your managers they might be thinking that come on my guys are not working properly we need some kind of tool to manage their productivity or capacity or something like that right problems that we are facing in day to day business so then there is a new project that will come up because of that then you will try to acquire a new project or you build it on your own right that's your middle management and obviously from external drivers amazon is coming up with lot of features in their ott platform amazon prime correct netflix needs to keep pace with that so for netflix amazon prime is an external driver any feature that they build new probably they will also need to build and if it's working fine in the market why not let's build it right what does it mean you are generating a need some you are trying to identify a need somewhere and that's where the project will start okay so that's your analyzing current state first thing is your business needs i have already talked about it where it comes from there are external factors there are middle management bottom up or it can be from top down there are organizational structure and culture how does your organization look like currently right now what is the organizational structure right now why do you need to look at that why because tomorrow if you want to build a new product for example do you need any changes in your organizational structure do you need to change your teams do you need to bring in a new manager or probably change the hierarchy of the organization yeah that's what it talks about third is your capabilities and processes capabilities means what are you good at what, what is that thing that you do good so maybe you are pretty good with you know developing mobile apps for android that's your capability or you are good with finance applications that's your capability process is how you do it so i'm talking about capabilities and processes processes means how you do it so what kind of different kind of processes are you following we uh, seen uh, lean six sigma it could be scrum it could be you know agile methodologies plenty of things are there right how do you do it how do you achieve that capability next is technology and infrastructure so obviously how good are you with technology and your infrastructure do you what are your current locations or look at your infrastructure do you need to hire more people and that's why you need bigger place for your teams yeah so you should know what is your current standing right that's why we are doing this okay your policies current hr policies look at what happened in uh, your covid a lot of companies never had the work from home policy but they had changed it yeah so look at your policy what is it currently and does it need any kind of change in future to achieve that state so a lot of people got you know very good offers during last i mean last 3 hour 3 years right hefty packages yeah hrs had to change their policy their work home policy their leave policy for example their laptop policy what not then your business architecture business architecture means see every business has got different components business is not it's not a monolithic kind of structure it it is actually based on a lot of components for example uh talk about it right your it may be having a hr division it may be having a payroll division or accounts division sales and marketing would be there there would be it there would be uh uh it enabled services there could be 
plenty of these kind of things that will be infra infrastructure team how do these connect with each other what is your business architecture like that's what you need to look at okay next is internal assets so anything that is you know financial resources important thing is patents here for example uh, microsoft is uh, sorry not microsoft google was very keen in buying a lot of uh, patents from motorola and they did it actually then they bought motorola for a year and after that they left them and then lenovo bought motorola so that is your internal asset anything that you know you have as an asset with you that's your internal assets asset. external influences these are usually uh, something like your government regulatory uh, companies or organizations your industry structure it can be a competitor can be a macro economic factors like labor unions and all those things yeah it can be part of that look at all these you know b o c t p b i e look at all this when you have to analyze your current state look at your current state first try to define where you are right now so you can do a similar exercise for yourself when you are preparing for uh cvap or ccb or ecb whatever it is yeah i'll not go into techniques and tools uh there's something uh, that needs a deeper understanding of the subject so i'll skip that part now you have already defined your you have analyzed your current state right now you need to define what should be you like in future that will be like defining your future state right what are your goals what do you want to achieve what are those necessary conditions that you want to meet so that the business requirements or business needs are met yeah and that's why you need business requirements as input and what you get as an output will be your future state description that will define a kind of document if not document at least some kind of understanding that says clearly where do you want to be in your future state what do you want to be potential value what value are you getting what kind of benefit are you reaping out of that in initiative right that becomes your output and then business objectives so business objectives will be your targets that you have to meet okay so you will see that similar kind of things are here also uh i'll i'll tell you exactly where it is similar so these are your elements first is business goals and objectives uh so your business goals obviously to achieve something you need to have a good understanding of what you want to achieve you know what your current state is you should know but where you want to be how will you measure it that's why you have to come up with smart goals specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound make smart goals everywhere same thing is with your career also right that is your objective you have a smart goal that i have to achieve a cvap certification before 31st december that's it that's my smart goal is it achievable yes is it measurable yes it is specific yes it is relevant in your case if you are a ba yes is it time bound yes because you have given a date for that right that's how you do it and that's what you have to do in life you always need to make smart goals second is your scope of solutions uh, space so what kind of options are you considering when investigating possible solutions okay there may be there may be multiple options available to reach that future what kind of different kind of options are you achieving for example you have to build a house right your scope of solution space would be that buy a house directly construct the house on your own construct the house with help of a uh, what do you call it contractor yeah so you have got multiple options available that's your scope of solution space okay. then we have constraints no matter what you do even if you achieve your future state there will be certain constraints available uh, i mean that will prevail over there for example you are working with a company you um, you have successfully deployed the project everything has been done you have but your team size remains the same that is a constraint 
you wanted more people so that your application could be supported by someone in your team but the management never uh, approved it it's a constraint right so anything that you know that has been a constraint and will remain a constraint you have to identify that and define it that so lot many times you will see that people are saying you know it's a known issue for example a lot of uh, qa folks say that right? it's a known issue that's a constraint for you next is organizational structure and culture so this one is similar to previous one so earlier what we did was we defined the current state where we are now we are defining where we want to be how the future structure is going to look like future structure or culture your in the previous task what we did was your analyze current state right that time you were looking at how things are currently in your culture in your organizational culture or probably in your organizational structure now you are looking at what does it take for me to achieve this goal so that i need to change the organizational structure and culture because only if i change my organizational structure and culture i need more people for example we have gotten a project and we need more people for react there is nobody who knows react in my team i need more people for that so i hire more people maybe i hire a new manager for them yeah so that's your future state so that's why organizational structure and culture your capabilities and processes currently you don't have capabilities around agile methodology so you hire a scrum master from outside right what new kind of technology or uh, what new kind of capability or process do you want to come up with or do you need to come up with to achieve that future state that is defined here then comes your technology and infrastructure same thing what new technology what new infrastructure maybe you'll have to buy a new space because now you have gotten a new project you need a new building to accommodate 500 people for that project just an example practically it's too much but a lot of banking applications actually have structure like that 500 people yes your policies could be your hr policy people are not joining your company because the current state is that you know only 21 days of leave in the entire year you'll have to change your policy because others are doing it they are making it to 30 days at a stretch you can take a maximum of 15 days something like that right these are your hr policies anything you know that governs our day to day tactical level things your day to day business in the office these are your policies do you need to change that to achieve that future state that's what you're looking at right now then your business architecture how different components within a business interact with each other so do you need any kind of changes in your uh, payroll department when it's dealing with your hr department something like that yeah that's your business architecture internal assets do you need to acquire more assets yeah identify assumptions so when you are defining your future state you will also you know you will be tempted to have certain kind of assumptions whenever you feel that you are making an assumption about certain thing in life and this is not just about webok it's about your life also validate those clearly identify those understand it identify it and validate it make sure that whatever assumptions you have made are true if it poses any kind of risk then you should have the right kind of person involved in that activity who will take care of that risk yeah so that's about ba thing then potential value so potential value is something that is that we define as uh, something that is valuable to you what kind of potential value will you get eventually when you are uh, when you have successfully completed this project and remember guys of this for all of you okay ROI is not the only thing. Return on investment, or your if you are earning more dollars uh, as potential value, that's not everything. Your reputation in the market is also important. Your CSR activities, corporate social responsibility, yeah. Your standing, your relationship with other uh, companies, that is also very important. 
your market share that's very important so there are a lot of factors involved in that potential value what are you gaining out of it what are you gaining after after doing that exercise of strategy analysis right that's what is your potential value okay next thing is when you are moving from your current state to future state obviously there will be a lot of risks involved in that you can expect that uh there are five elements that you need to know one is unknowns despite of how knowledgeable you are there will be some kind of risk that will happen out of nowhere and you will not be able to gauge it unknowns will always be there but try to be rational if you are dealing with unknowns try to look at your previous picture try to look try to uh, get the document you know lessons learned document from previous projects or any such risk register that you have from your previous projects have a look at that yeah, that will help you second is constraints assumptions and dependencies three of this should separately be treated as a risk your constraints can become a risk your assumptions that you have made in a project can become a risk your dependencies also across the system your dependency with some other teams uh may pose a threat may pose a risk identify those it always happens when you are going to about to deploy something you get to know that you you know your uh infra team is not ready for this at all yeah that's your dependency you have made certain assumption initially that okay these guys will be ready by then because the dates have already been published but they are not ready you made an assumption about that because you had a dependency right and then there are constraints constraints are always there treat them as a risk is it cause going to cause any trouble to your project then negative impact to value how does it demean the value of your project what is that negative impact that is happening on the value do you lose customers are you losing on money what is it right so those kind of things go there then we have risk tolerance very 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 important point in bebok and um, expect questions on this particular topic risk tolerance what is your tolerance towards the risk how much risk can you take so one is risk aversion you don't want to take any kind of risk unwillingness to accept any kind of risk okay. second is neutrality some level of risk you will accept and uh, it should not be a you know a loss for you yeah that's neutrality and then there is risk seeking give me more risk so i can earn more you have heard this term right more risk more gain it's true actually it's a risk but you know if you you know if that risk doesn't occur you are going to earn a lot something of that sort happens in you know all those online gaming and betting and all that right so there are three uh tolerance levels that companies have risk aversion they don't want to get into any kind of risk they are ready to pay up front to not go through any kind of risk or they can be neutral and then there are risk seeking people like elon musk they are risk seeking people they are venturing into all those things that the world is not even sure of you know colony in a uh, in mars colony on moon very risky kind of project right but believe me the day it happens he's going to earn like anything he'll be the king of the world yeah okay so you need to look at risk and then finally you have to make a recommendation so based on the analysis that you have done so far with your risk make a recommendation either you go with the change either you do nothing you can put in more amount of money to lower the risk or you can take more risk to earn more money there are plenty of strategies available a lot of such kind of recommendations are available in bebok remember one very good recommendation is to not do anything okay remember that 
lot of people lot of newbies you know who are actually learning the bug first time they get into this trap they should understand that even doing nothing is also a very good option sometimes not every time but sometime you can do that when you are not getting any kind of benefit why why get into this kind of a project when we are not earning anything out of it when you are not gaining when there is no potential value available with that project why would you do it even right don't do anything just let it be like that yeah so that's your recommendation so uh your five uh things now there is one confusion around this part a uh, lot of people feel that uh, this is something that is done by a project manager actually it is done by project manager only there are two things that you need to understand you as a ba will have your own type of risks mostly with the ba activities right you know connecting with stakeholders your uh, what not all those remaining five designs and requirements gathering and all those things you'll have risks around that that you can share here and out of your knowledge and wisdom also you can put in your two cents with the project manager right the eventual accountability lies with the project manager only when it comes to risk management okay you are you are part of it as a supporter as a provider that's it as an enabler yeah so always remember that uh usually in organizations we have uh, your risk charters that's how it's created so there are plenty of examples available uh, online you can see how does a risk charter look like okay finally now that you have done you have analyzed your current state you have defined where you want to be in future that's your defining future state you have assessed the risks now you are going to define the change strategy what strategy are you going to build to achieve that state so it will come in a form of business case this is where you will create a business case so you need your current future state description obviously you need your risk analysis results you need your stakeholder engagement approach because you have to deal with lot of stakeholders now and then the output that you'll get from it is your change strategy the strategy that you are going to use to achieve that state future state that you have defined in the previous task and the solution scope what are the boundaries of that solution what will it contain what will it not contain okay so the first thing is uh your solution scope how does the solution look like what are the boundaries of that solution it can be your capabilities it can be your technology your business rules business decision your workflows your different kind of functions that you how, what in your to achieve that state what kind of boundary so within your project boundary what all things will get impacted because of that where do you need changes you will need changes in your knowledge in your resources in your you know business rules in your technology in your locations in your network functions all those factors are involved that's your solution scope okay then comes gap analysis so i had a question on this gap analysis the difference between your current state and future state capabilities where you are going to be in future minus where you are today whatever that gap is that is your gap analysis so often we do this and remember guys there is a question around it to perform gap analysis both current state and future state are required it's must otherwise how will you do the data how will you subtract two numbers if one of the numbers is not available it's something like that okay then comes your enterprise readiness assessment is your company even or your enterprise even ready for that kind of change are they ready for that change so you need to have some kind of readiness assessment around that you'll need to see whether your company is ready for that or not okay how much prepared you are for that you know accepting it or rejecting it finally we have change strategy uh so it's a uh, a kind of high level plan where key activities are defined to achieve that state what are those minuscule things what are those smaller level things that you are going to 
uh, work on. So, for example, in your in your projects, you might be doing this, right? Every quarter, you might be having some releases every quarter. Inside those quarters, then you will be having those smaller releases, you know, smaller versions, version release. That is your change strategy. What is the timeline for that? How does it align to the business objective? What is the opportunity cost involved in that? Are you even ready to do that? Organizational readiness is also part of that. Yeah. So that becomes your change. What strategy are you going to take to build up that? And finally, we have transition states. Sorry. Yeah, this one. So you are not going to do everything in one shot, right? You're going to break it down again. Releases. Why do we have multiple releases in the year? We don't, we can't do everything in one shot. Right? We do releases. So what are those transition states and release planning? You can always help your project manager and your team members with a realistic plan. That's what it means, right? So those small uh, level milestones that you have during those transition states, define those and achieve that. Similar thing is for your career also, for example. You are not going to achieve CBAP in a short. It will take time. It will take a couple of months for you to prepare. Your first target would be to you know, get a good hold on the book. Read it a couple of times. Yeah, That's your first stage. Your second uh, transition state could be that you start attempting mock questions. Third state could be that you then look at the you know, delta, the gap analysis that you do, where, how far are you from your goal, those kind of things, right? So there are multiple states. That is what is covered here, transition states and release planning. Okay. That's it uh, about strategy analysis. So uh, I'll sum it up very quickly. Uh, whenever you are moving from your current state to future state, your current, you will need to Analyze your current state first. You will need to understand where do you currently stand. That's one. You need to define where you have to reach. You have to reach at the top of the mountain or somewhere else, maybe midway. That should be a future state, right? What does it take to reach there? What kind of risks can surface during that period? That's what is covered here in strategy analysis. Let me talk about the CBAP certification program, which we have. We have been running this program for eight plus years and majority of the students are able to crack the exam in the first attempt. And why that is so? A few points about that. All our trainers are industry professionals. They are of course CBAP certified as well. We also have a question bank which has 1200 plus questions and this question bank is highly appreciated. Nothing is perfect but the feedbacks which we get about the question bank is quite good. Thirdly. Our approach is such that we not only connect the Baba concepts with the real life examples, but we also have specific mock question solving workshops. So you also get used to the idea that how to answer these questions, whether scenario based or case study based. There are also doubt clearing sessions. So even if you are finished the training, this, these doubt clearing sessions are available to all. So once you finish the training program, you are preparing for it and then you have a doubt, don't need to worry. Just contact us and you will be given the link to join the doubt clearing sessions. So in a way, we have a very holistic approach to preparing for the CBAP exam and our team is always available even after you finish the training.